with Daniel Lemar from Harbor High School. So far we've been defining the afterlife, or what is called the afterlife, by how it was written down by people, sages, from thousands of years ago when they wrote texts like the Bible. And that is how we define religion, that is fine. We, just, we define religion by a set of texts that we feel map out a certain set of morals and values that are wholesome to live by. That is also where we get the term afterlife, and that's why we've been talking about it. We are now confining the topic of afterlife to religion and what people believe religiously. I think that is a flawed set of logical arguments because we have to think about science, which is currently and always has been the main enemy of religion. And I know that many people, and maybe even some people in this room, not judging, have written off science as heresy or whatever. But if God did create all things, or if a set of gods created all things, then that would mean he created science. And what better way to reveal his miracles through science? So we have to look at the possibility that an afterlife could be revealed through science. Well, I know somebody was talking about somebody who was struck by lightning. Maybe they visit the afterlife. Can I borrow him for an experiment where I strike him with lightning and then do an MRI experiment? Because who knows? Maybe his subconscious is really at work, creating a reality that he saw in the afterlife. Who knows? We haven't done any tests about that. I think that there's a very distinct possibility that the afterlife, or whatever you want to call it, is merely defined by what our subconscious conjures up for us to think about. Our subconscious is a very powerful tool that can, we, every, not, every time we dream, we might not remember the dreams, we're in a different world that is defined by our subconscious. Maybe after we die, our subconscious is still working. Maybe that's why the man who was struck by lightning came back to life. Maybe that's why he felt he was losing an afterlife. His subconscious is still at work. Now, I'm looking at through a physicist's point of view, where would we fit an afterlife? Would it be in another dimension? Would it be just, yeah, subconscious? Where would we put an afterlife? And if you want to look at it as something created by God or gods, then that's your belief. My belief is that if there is an afterlife, and I was talking to somebody in the back of the room that what happens to you after you die is what you believe. So if you think I'm going to hell, then ha, you're going to hell. If you don't think it's an afterlife, ha, you're just going to be a one-dimensional point in the ground, worm food. And I said that in front of somebody in the club fair, and the um, political fair, and she got very angry at me because I referred to a dead body as a hundred dirt. Um, I didn't mean that disrespectfully. We have, you should respect your dead if that's what you want to do. But I think the fact that we're defining the world where dead people are now by our beliefs is a little self-centered and selfish. We, sh we have no idea. We never will know. Thank you.